So, welcome back. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're one of the few people watching me right now live, then you saw a black screen for a minute while I did some bookkeeping. We're back. We've stopped on Scars for the last VOD, so we are up to Scourge now. Anyway, what have we got for Scourge? Ooh. No, I don't think I want my forest to be 1-1s. One That's always dangerous. Unless you have a very specific plan for how you're going to keep your lands alive. Dawn Elemental... I don't think we need Decree of Pain. Probably not. Dimensional Breach. Urgent Growth. Clerics cost white, black less. Not terrible. We do have a large number of clerics, I think. If I just go. We have 18 right now, unless I have something that cares about clerics. So, yeah. Probably, probably be okay with Slot, Legion, Scourge. Might want the Edgewalker then. We'll have to see if I care enough about getting his discount on my clerics. Because there is a chance that it's just like, yeah, that's saving me, like, you know, a mana per creature, but that's not super helpful. <clears throat> like, I'm not getting any benefit by making them functionally zero mana. Like, I'm imagining something like Eile the uh, Eternal Pilgrim being free and being able to abuse something that way, but we're not trying to infinite combo. We're just trying to... um. Gain an arbitrarily large amount of life and then stay alive for ever. Turn face up, all damage will be dealt to it. This turn is dealt to target creature instead. Uh, don't need lethal vapors. Go a creature card this way, draw a card. Undamaged sheep attacking creature. Choose one, gain six life or prevent six damage. Nope. Each gain life equal to the highest mana value among permanents they control. Nope. <clears throat> Routing vine, stabilizer, tendrils. A bomb, a burden, war chief, speakable symbol, ring shards, pipe clean, this inquisitor now. Okay, none of those. Scourge. Shadow more. So we could go check the secret layer drops if we want to scry fall. So here, commander. Mm. Secret layer drop. Okay, search with these options should be good. Now we just need to find the unique cards. Which is a little bit hard because the artwork, you know, it's like, I don't recognize this artwork, but this is not a new card. Don't need the Mind Flayer. 
Avenger balance. Getron. Er. Versioning. Carpet. Uh. Next sixty liver contagion engine crater hoof sun mare Yeah, I had to read this one because it's one of the reskins for an existing card. I had to make sure what it was and that it wasn't a card. Alright, so there's Doric. If Forest and transforms into the thing that buffs legendaries, I believe, so no. Doubling cube, no. Pick. Exquisite blood. Hearthstone. Um, ward sacrifice a creature. Gets plus two plus zero for each treasure you control. One or more players sacrifice one or more creatures. Create a tap treasure once per turn. Ship, draw messenger. Crafting a greater be Grim Tutor. If you sacrifice three or more clues this turn, transform it. The upside down link. You turn target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. When the creature put onto the battlefield this way leaves the battlefield, transform it back and tap pay one life at black mana. Okay. The Howling Mine. Sing Death. That's not the white. Good. Select. Back, Lindala, Lord of the Dead. A plus two, plus zero, menace, attacks, defending player, sacrifices a creature, and you make a walker token, which is two, two, zombie. Sucker girl, shaper. Power Shell, Merciless Executioner, Nick Golem. There's a battlefield, create two walkers. As long as it's equipped, she must be blocked if able. At least two zombies attack, she gains indestructible. Nope. Whisper now. Two tap, choose target creature card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn, return it to the battlefield tapped. It's okay. Not anything super amazing. Here, play crafter, platinum angel. Sliver. Uh, choose two abilities from among First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink. Humans you control have each of the chosen abilities. As long as you control four or more humans, humans you control get plus two, plus two. 
We have some number of human clerics, but I don't think enough to justify him. So, smugglers come <clears throat> Words. Alzim Reach um, has hexproof. Well, has hexproof unless he's attacking. Whenever a creature you control with Reach attacks, untap it, and it can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. This combat, when one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. Nope. Fire temp. Garden, drug, whatnot, dynamo, tracker, pills, fiction, skin, the mug, breakable patient. The will enters a, enters or leaves the battlefield. Each opponent may investigate. Each opponent who doesn't loses one life. You investigate X times, where X is one plus the number of opponents who investigated this way. I think so. And ends the Laporte cutthroat. Okay. Oh wait, hang on. Uh, ours. Auras you control have exalted, and he's a 2 4 double strike. Nope. So that was all of the secret lairs. We are on to Shadow Moor. And whenever a player casts a white spell, you may pay one and gain one. Nope. Yeah, I don't think I could run him if it was just whenever a player casts a white spell. Player casts a spell, gain a life, yes. Dark Shell. If you would gain life, gain twice that much life instead. Yes. Yes, to Boon Reflection. Shadow more. Oops, not Bond. Boon Reflection. How much white and four? I would love to gain twice as much life every time, yes. Could run Cauldron of Souls. I have Solemnity and Malera currently on the list. So this would just save all of my creatures from dying until they break up that combo. Cauldron of Souls. Assuming that the other two make it in. If the other two don't make it in, then we wind up cutting this one anyway. Uh, Chainbreaker, no. Cinderbones. Corrosive Mentor. Corrupt. Gain X life if green was spent to cast the spell, and X life if white was spent to cast the spell. Again, if I was doing the top add mana equal to my life total, <clears throat> getting to triple my life total at least. I mean, it's one mana short of doing that, but... Should be able to make it work. Uh, but yeah, I still don't think I want to bother with it just because it's not quite good enough. Fences, no. Fracturing Gust. Destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Gain two life for each permanent destroyed this way. I mean, if I'm 
Going to blow up all the artifacts and enchantments. I guess this would be the one to do it with. And I will consider fracturing guest. It's two and then triple white green hybrid. like privilege position. Fracturing Gust is an instant? Okay. I did not remember that about it. <clears> hey, <throat> anyway, so if I do need a mass artifact and enchantment removal card specifically, that will be the pick. <clears throat> Unless I want to go with one of the exiling cards instead. Which I might, actually. That might be what happens. Shroud, enchanted creatures you control have shroud. Nope. Sorry, moth. Don't need you. Heartmender, no. Argus, no. Target attacking or blocking creature would deal this turn. If that creature is black or red, destroy it. Nope. Kitchen Finks, maybe with some of the other cards I have, since it wouldn't be able to get the counters and therefore could just keep coming back. It's an oof, right? Maybe not because we don't have a way to sacrifice it, so that might become an issue. Rabble no and swamp no Oregon Scarecrow. I think we need mana reflection, mass calcify. Target permanent. Only when it enters, though. Like Banshee, no. Activation. Skulk, no. This fail planes, though. Maybe. This is another way to uh, recycle cards. So, preventing me from decking out. Osbridge Troll, <clears throat> Nivious Wisps, Archer Initiate, ne Oracle of Nectars. <clears throat> Do I want a creature that's just X tap, gain X life if it sits in play for a turn? I don't think think so, but it's a little bit tempting as a mana sink. There we go. It's two green, white, and elf cleric, two, two. <clears throat> It does seem like the type of card to go in the deck just because we can <clears throat> gain tons of life from it. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, that player loses two life and you gain two life. Well, I'm not above draining our opponents, so... Just because I don't want to win by damage. I mean, they can just choose not to play any more lands, and then I don't gain any life. <clears throat> then joke's on me. Prison no puppeteer click. White creatures you control have tap game one life. <sighs> Probably not. 
at five mana for a two two. Do I want risks? Probably not again. I do have some ways to make tokens, but they're either repeatable or f like repeatable in the turn, like I don't have to tap the source that's doing it, or they're free each turn, which frees up my mana to do other things. Ruined Halo. Can be good. The biggest downside to Ruined Halo is I have to know what I'm naming ahead of time. Similar to Nevermore, but more specific in that I can cast this after the card has come into play in case it like sets up an infinite combo down the line. Like I could be protected from I think it's Blood Ars is the one that targets, whereas Zulaport doesn't. And they're both life loss, so if somebody had an infinite loop with um, Blood Artist, they wouldn't be able to kill me if I named Blood Artist because I couldn't be targeted. That being said, uh, the set's Tiger is probably better for situations like that, where I just gain protection from black until end of turn. I have to be worried about infinite combos that l cause life loss instead of damage, is the thing I'm worried about, so... Plus one, plus one, and indestructible. Plus one, plus one, and flying. No. Create a token that's a copy of Spawn Writhe. No. Throw ours and equipment attached to target creature. Adderkite. Toil to Renown. No. Torture. Tower above. Shepherd. Don't think we need Wheel of Sun and Moon to avoid getting decked out. We already have uh, Bow of Nylea and um, Ulamog on our list now. The upside to the wheel is that it gets around things like... Um, Line of the Void because they're both replacement effects, so you can replace the card going to the graveyard with being put on the bottom of your deck, and then um, Leyline of the Void doesn't work anymore because the card's not going to the graveyard. It's no longer a valid thing to replace. That being said, I don't think we need it. Windbrisk Raptor, and I am, as always, a sucker for Woodfall Primus. This is one of my absolute favorite green cards for a commander. Treefolk or Elemental? I'm blanking. Treefolk Shaman, right? It usually doesn't come up what its creature types are when I'm building for the deck, so... 6-6. Six, six. And Wound Reflection. Okay, back we go. Shadow more. Shadows over Innistrad Original. There we go. Which of the vein always watching <clears throat> deliverance will run anguish on making. Wished. Ah, I hit the caps lock. Off by like one key.
angle that I'm sitting in. Go again. One, black, instant. Okay. Let's adjust my currently bad posture so that way I have to keep messing up the creatures you control have skulk. Eh. Like a lot of my creatures are small. That's not a terrible thing to have on them to get through for damage, but creature spell with mana value three or less investigate. Um, would depend on how many things I have that care about artifacts coming into play or leaving play, but maybe. Because if I have enough of those in the deck, then most of my creatures are small enough to trigger the Bygone Bishop. I'm assuming he's a Cleric Spirit. It'd be weird if he wasn't. Fair cleric, same difference. Gain five life, no. Graphstone, keeping red. Dauntless Cathar, dead weight. Ecton Stone. Yeah, I can see running Decton Stone. Well, I think the Legions to Ashes was better decked in stone, question mark. Have to see. Send upon the sinfulness. Whenever another spirit enters the battlefield under your control, gain two life and four mana, make a spirit. Exile any number of tar creatures you control, return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. That's probably just better than Ghostway, because I don't have to exile my tokens and I can just let them die. And if I have, like, enchantments that care about them dying. Because that's the one problem with Ghostway, is it gets rid of all of your tokens regardless. But with the interlude, I can... Um, leave the tokens, and then if it's a board wipe, maybe we get some effect off one of my artifacts or enchantments for all the tokens dying while saving all of my creatures. That's the ideal, anyway. We'll have to see if that works out. Uh boards. It also just lets me exile all of my non-token creatures and have them come back and trigger all the comes into play effects again. We can gain even more life. Fire Swan. Stranger. Faults new Mind Rack D Gotten. Patrick. Peter. A Pious Evangel. When Pious Evangel or another creature enters the battlefield under my control, gain one life. And it's the Wayward Disciple. Or another creature an opponent. Or another creature I control dies, target opponent loses one life, and I gain one life. Eh. 
So the front side's only gaining me life from my creatures, and the back side is only draining my opponents. Like, I don't need more of the drain effects. That's not what I'm super focused on. Again, if it gained me life when my creatures, when opponents' creatures came into play too, then we could justify it in the deck, but without that, I don't think so. Which is kind of a shame. I'd like for creatures with more than one toughness to make it into the deck that can gain me that kind of life, but apparently it's just not that easy to get anymore. Spell card from my graveyard, make a 1 1. Yeah, I don't think I need Sigarda. Like that Sigarda. We have almost every other Sigarda in the deck. I mean, this Soren's hilarious, but I can't imagine getting to the nine loyalty necessary to activate him. He has to stay in play unchecked for three turns. And none of the no mercy effects kill my opponent's things for attacking my planeswalkers. <sighs> yeah, probably not. It is funny, but no. This journal, Gitrog 2, Raven Inspector, Tireless Tracker, Gossip Monger, Decaphobia. Street. Spirits exiles two cards from their hand. Disciple Westbell Abbey. Probably not. Scarecrow. Last page is Woodland Stream all by itself. Okay. Shadows. Shards of Alara's next. Then reveal the top card of your library and put that card in your hand. You lose life equal to its mana value. You may repeat this process any number of times. That might be pushing it even for this deck, but I could definitely see Ad Nauseam being playable. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we'll just leave that slot for Bolus's Citadel if we're going to do something like that. Whenever you gain life, you may pay white and one. If you do, put a 1-1 counter on target creature for each life you gain. Again, that's more killing the opponents as a payoff for life gain. Whenever another creature dies, you may gain one life. There we go. There's what we need. Anybody's creature is dying. Death Greeter. It is all one word. Black for a human shaman. Shaman. Capsule. I think we need this Elspeth. Black capsule. Arrow Hydra. Price it. you control with power five or greater gain? Oil. 
Count the number of cards in your library, your life total becomes that number. There's a very real chance that this is going to cause me to lose life by the time I can cast it. So, nope. Don't need progenitus. I captain of Eos. As a marble chalice, top gain of life. No. Collector, Michael off. Counter all. Exile target creature card from a graveyard, make a 1 1. Fine, but not necessary. Onyx Goblet. Up to two creatures with mana value, one or less. So we can just get two of the Soul Sisters. Yeah, I think we need Ranger of Eos. Human Scout. Human Soldier Ranger. Yeah, we'll run Anton Ruel, most likely. Our fiber gray in your hand, add green for each creature revealed this way. Elvage Titan, Sanctum Gargoyle, Nymph. Hourglass. Battlefield draw a card for each creature at eight. Gain life equal to target creature's power. Nope. Yeah, I don't think we have enough big creatures for Sunseed Nurturer. This red Dragger. Model Yoke. LBs. Nope. Okay. Shards. That brings us to starter. Ninety nine starter, right? That had the handful of unique cards to it. Getting Argan. Yeah, there's Champion Lancer. Okay. No. Back more. Lancer, no. Wisdom. Grim Tutor. Well, if there was ever a deck where I did not mind the three life portion on that card, it is this one. And since that's already not a good enough reason to not run it, I think if we need another tutor, this one gets it. It's possible we don't need it, and that we'll just be running, like, demonic and vampiric and whatnot, but. Archer. Let's renew touch. Let's charge, right, fury. Uh, 
assets. Wicked Pact. Builds. Okay. Starter. Starter, we go Streets of New Capenna. If damage would be dealt to you, prevent that damage and mill twice that many cards. I mean, we have an Ulamog. You have to be careful about um, instant speed ways to exile our graveyard, though, if we wanted to do something like this. It almost feels like we're giving our opponents an out to, as a way to kill us. If they can't touch our life total enough, so maybe not. Yeah, that might actually be a bit too dangerous. Ballroom Brawlers. Body Launderer, new. Safety. Legger Stash. Kill three cards if there are twenty or more cards in your graveyard. Robar no. new. Relax cards and Excellent. Sacrifice a three plus power creature to do it again. Dusk Mangler. Barrage. Elspeth Resplendent. Put a permanent card of man value three or less from among them onto the battlefield with a shield counter on. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Yeah, I don't think we need Beth. Not that one anyway. I think we need extraction specialist. Like, yes, it could get back one of our dead soul sisters, but if things have gone that wrong where I need to play this thing to reanimate them instead of something that's reusable then it's probably not good enough don't need fight Ooh, excuse me don't need fight rigging because i don't do that very well like get high power creatures into play gala greeters the first time I play a creature, I can gain two life or make a treasure. Second time, I'm probably going to do the other one. Third time is when I put the counter on him. Yeah, I don't think we necessarily need that one. I'd rather just gain life every time a creature comes into play. Create a 1-1. One, one. Untap two creatures to draw a card. Yeah, I don't think I need the fountain either. We might want the inspiring overseer because I have cards that interact with clerics and angels. So I just call it Nuka Pena. I might just I think I have this problem every time I try and go to it. Alright, so what's her name again? Inspiring Overseer. Here. It's two and a white for an old cleric. Hey. Right. Don't need the dual thief, kill shot, knockout blow, patient. Didn't 
Hell, I was only going to say limo and then decided limousine at the last second. In case you're wondering why I decided to pronounce it so weird. All right, rabble-rousing. If we're going to make creatures, being able to make, like, a dozen more and gain life for them coming into play, maybe. I swear I'm not a token deck, though. Fortunately, I do want some number of tokens to give me ways to keep gaining life from creatures coming in and dying and attacking and blocking. So there has to be some amount of concession towards token making. I just don't want to build another, you know, like a uh, wrist deck or something that could just as easily be a gave deck and would be doing better. Don't need the warden. Sanguine spy. Yeah, sorry, Shadow of Mortality. Not your home. Don't think I need the shakedown heavy because I'm not pressuring the opponent's life totals enough. Yeah, Social Climber is only my creatures. We already shot down better creatures than her. Tavern Swindler, no. A Titan of Industry, probably not. Want Topiary Stomper as another land fetcher. I don't think we need him. Okay. But we could just be running Untamed Wilds or something for three mana, and then we don't get a 4 4, but it also can get our dual lands and they can come into play untapped. You set your library for a creature with mana value. Left cards, play a number of creatures, and make a Rhino. Nope. So the Berman no. welcome. Got War Chief no. The other two triomes. Alright, so that was streets. Skip that one, go to the third one for the commanders. This thing. I don't need Benny. Uh, beginning of enchanted opponents end step you and that player each draw a card. When you attack enchanted opponent or planeswalker they control, or they attack you or planeswalker you control, sacrifice tenuous troops. Sell it with a hit counter. Boxing ring. Do we want threefold signal at all? I don't think we have that many um, actual three color spells, so probably not. Uh, or deals combat damage to a player. Exile up to one target non land permanent for as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may cast it. Whenever another player casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. Nope. Add counters on it, investigate. Nope. Number of 1-1 one, one counters on it equal to 1 plus the number of creatures you control. Another creature comes in, get a 1-1 one, one counter. When it dies, create that many citizens. Damning verdict. Probably want Grand Crescendo, though. So, Ander. Perfect. Let's seal. See here, I believe. Grand Crescendo. 
R E S C E N X white white for an instant. All right, this is gonna be the last one because we're getting on the two hour mark, and I do have to get going. Entire permanent card and opponent's graveyard to the battlefield under the yeah no. Um, each opponent chooses money, friends, or secrets. For each player who chose money, you and that player make a treasure. For each player who chose friends, you and that player make a one one. For each player who chose secrets, you and that player draw a card. So as long as I'm gaining life for all of these happening, that might actually be something to consider. And we should be able to. So, Master of Ceremonies. This three and a white, excuse me, for a rhino. I know. Druid. Three, four. Hey. Right. Uh, resourceful defense, bad counters on another permanent you control. Move any number of counters from target permit you control to another target permit. Attacks, or attacks one of your opponents, that creature gains. Four. Draw a card for each opponent who drew two or more cards and create a treasure for each opponent who had two or more lands enter the battle. Fine. Well, I could technically run Bellowing Mauler. Like, I can just keep paying the four life every turn and not care, but that still only seems okay. It does make them kill a real creature. I have to consider both of them. I'm under a little bit of a time crunch, so I want to finish this, though. I might go back and add those two later. Don't need the detective. Don't need the whole scheme. Example. Not care for the misfortune teller. Protection racket was never anything that interested me. Or is waste management. Wave of rats is not for this deck. Turn. Ender's Pack, no. despite the fact that I don't mind paying the life. Uh, for each kind of counter, one once. Tap creature I control. I think I need family favor. Another creature counters on it. The number of opponents you have. A2, sack a token, make a 4-4. Four, four. Lights Maverick. Scepter is okay, but I'm not planning on attacking our opponents that much normally. I could see life insurance since I don't mind losing the life and I might be able to offset it. Yeah, I should have stopped before this set. I'll have to look at these cards just to make sure, but those are the ones that I'm most thinking about running in the deck. But yeah, we're going to have to call it there, so thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.